So now uh, it's my pleasure to be able to get on to the, the, you know, the, um, the core of our program here, which is to compare the MS GIST and MS HSGI degrees. And so the way we'll do that is I, I first I'm going to talk for just a minute about the um, MS GIST degree. Um, then I'll interview Brandon Brooks and then uh, I'll talk for a minute about the MS HSGI degree and I'll we'll interview uh, Jillian. And then uh, we'll have a little discussion with uh, Jillian and Brandon and try to elucidate maybe kind of some of the differences in their experiences in the two programs. Next slide, please. So the MS in Geographic Information Science and Technology uh, is uh, uh, 28 units, uh, 12 core, 12 elective, two part thesis. Uh, so two semesters of thesis um, work, uh, required master's thesis. We're the only program in the country actually with a um, thesis requirement. Um, and it includes the, uh, the, the both, actually both the MS GIST and MS HSGI degree include the one week field excursion to the US Ripley Marine Science Center on Catalina Island, um, where we work on spatial data acquisition and use some of the latest technologies uh, for that. Um, so um, students in this program, um, you know, they learn how to plan, design, and execute GIS projects. Um, they have, um, you know, they're up to speed on the latest technology, and then they bring those those skills uh, into a thesis at the end of the at the end of the degree, uh, where they do a piece of, of original independent research, which is then uh, published in the uh, USC library and becomes part of the literature. Um, and uh, can I have the next slide, please? And so you can actually see we we maintain also uh, links to these. Uh, thesis projects and the manuscripts from them um, on our own website, and you can see the URL here. Um, and so, you'd be welcome to take a look uh, at that. You can see the URL at the bottom of the bullets here. Um, you can see they're gonna, they're on a wide variety of of of, of different topics. Um, as I said, we're the only MS just program in the U.S. that requires a thesis. Um, it's a very uh, we have a very strong and unique structure to prepare and help students execute the thesis, uh, which includes um, having writing instructors from USC in small class sizes um, and, and many details that we've done to kind of structure the curriculum to make sure that that we give students 100% uh, support for success with the thesis. Um, there's an internal award competition each semester and so you'll see on our website the, the award winning thesis projects are noted um, and we've also had many students win external awards for their thesis projects and so here you can see um, Sam Kruger uh, won the 2012 Unigis uh, Academic Excellence Prize. Um, uh, his, his thesis was really uh, um, uh, spatial analysis. Um, and then Kelly Wright won uh, a prize from the American Association of Geographers, AAG, the Jacques May prize, thesis prize in health geography. And her thesis was actually more of a web, web JS type of thesis. And she developed a, a, a spatially located library of, of neglected tropical of research on neglected tropical diseases actually a very useful thing in um, in in the world of, of, of health geography. Um, so I think now we'll, we'll turn and we'll have a minute we we'll get to talk to Brandon also about about his thesis in just a minute. So uh, it gives me great pressure pleasure to introduce our MS just along Brandon Brooks um, and Brandon um, finished his MS just degree in 2018. Um, and it's interesting actually, uh, when he first started his degree, he had kind of a big career change because he came from um, the world of corporate training and um, got a position with Esri, which is the um, uh, largest you know, GIS software provider in the world. And so um, Brandon, your, your undergrad degree was in organizational leadership um, how is it that you that you came into that position at Esri? How did that how did that kind of play out? Yeah, so that was actually kind of a crucial. Um, this program was a crucial hiring factor for me at Esri. I uh, had graduated with organizational leadership, wanting to get into corporate training uh, in 2010, and I'd been a technical training consultant for five years. And when I was looking at where where do I want to expand my career and the next steps for my career. I looked into geography and GIS. The field fascinated me. The type of work that I could be doing was really interesting to me. And since I was already a technical trainer, I thought uh, GIS is technical. Maybe I could get into training and teaching GIS 
work. And so uh, I started in the program and three months after that, I applied to be on Esri's training team and got hired to work at Esri. And so this program was a crucial component in their deciding factor of whether to, let, uh, to hire me onto their training team. Fantastic. So this good, interesting way in which you, you came together, your experience in corporate training, and then your turn into the, into the area of GIS, right? And which it had to do with joining our program and so on. Why did you get, why did you get interested in GIS coming from such a different background as an undergrad? Yeah, when I, I kind of looked at uh, all of the things that I've always had an interest in and the things that I enjoyed doing and maps and mapping was something that I had always loved as a kid. And I had kind of been doing GIS without knowing that that was the technical term. I was the person that if you said you're going on a vacation to a part of the country that I had been to, I would get onto Google Maps and I would create maps with pin drops and lines and trails and paths that I recommended with all of the different restaurants that I would recommend and all of the sites to see. So I was doing GIS without knowing it. And when I actually started looking into, well, how do I do that uh, or things like that, that's when I discovered GIS and said, that's where I need to be. That's, that's great. So many of our, when we read personal statements from applicants, it's very often it's, uh, I love maps. <laughs> it's the thing, the thing that really comes to the fore. So today uh, your career is, has evolved and you've um, left Esri and you're at Safe Light Group. And, you know, Safe Light Group for those who, I think some of us may have had an interaction when our windshield has been shattered and, and we had to fix our windshield and stuff. It seems like kind of an unusual company to have a GIS specialist. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do there and, and how your role came about? Sure, yeah. So uh, I, I lived in Redlands, California for the past five years. And then back at uh, the end of last year, we decided to move back to Columbus, Ohio, which is where I'm from originally. I wanted to be close to family. I wanted my kids to have a relationship with their grandparents. Uh, and so we moved uh, I, in the process of moving back, I needed to find a job and they were hiring for a senior GIS analyst and really an interesting position. And again, like you said, not something that you would typically think of as a GIS role or a place that would need GIS role. Uh, Safe Light is in a, what's called a negative services industry. You don't want to call us. That means your windshield's broken, you've got a crack, there's something that bad happened to you and you don't want to call us. And so our a distinguishing factor or what we try to do as best as possible is to make your customer experience as wonderful as possible so that it turns a bad experience into something that's positive and something that you're okay with. And part of that is actually having uh, technicians and having a facility to go to that is near your footprint. Uh, cars are advancing and changing all the time. And some of the new technologies with lane assist and uh, automatic braking for crash prevention, some of those technologies, uh, heads up displays, and they use cameras and those cameras have to be recalibrated. Uh, and those recalibrations, some of them can't be done mobily, can't be done uh, out at your home. So Safe Light has built their business on being able to, we come to you with your windshield and we'll fix it. And it's shifting very, very rapidly as all these new technologies come out to you need to come to us so we can recalibrate your windshield and make sure that you're safe on the road. And that is a problem. When we can come to you, we don't mind driving an hour. We'll drive an hour to you. That's not a big deal, but you don't want to drive an hour to us. And so we went from having one or two stores per uh, metropolitan area to needing four or five, depending on the area and what the situation was. And so I'm on the real estate team and our main focus is finding footprint in markets where we have customers, we know we have customers and we know we have business and we need to make sure that we have as close of a facility as possible to help them have a seamless and easy experience to get their windshields replaced. Yeah, it's seamless for the customer, but pretty data intensive on Safe Light side to ensure that, right? Very much so. That's a big part of my work is, is taking data out of our systems to know where our customers are um, aggregated at a zip code level. We don't we don't go down to the address level, but we know roughly in the in the zip code area where our customers are at, and we also know by um, the number of registered vehicles per zip code. That's a paid data set that we can get, and so we know roughly how many vehicles are out there. We have an estimate of how much um, class is broken, and then we say, okay, then there's this much work in this area that we can uh, go and help by having a footprint in that area. Or how much specialized glass is likely to be broken. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of just complicated. So can you tell us, so do you have a sense, Brandon, a little bit of, of like companies like Safe Light? I mean, 
Um, what's the need like for JS specialists in all sorts of different private sector employers? You know, I think that that's really growing. Personally, I, I, I have been just amazed at how many people don't fully understand what it is that I can do, what my capabilities are as a GIS analyst. And by, uh, I am the first GIS analyst that SafeLight has ever had. Uh, our parent company, Belron in the UK, had a GIS specialist who just retired. And so I came in right as he was leaving. And this is the first one that's been here in the US, uh, I am. And so I've been able to uh, help with all sorts of mapping requests. And I have gotten numerous contacts from people that are just amazed and wonder, uh, extremely grateful that I'm, I'm here because they were the mapping person for this project or that project. And they don't have the tools, they don't have the expertise, they don't have the capabilities. So something that would take them an entire day to do, I can accomplish in 15 to 20 minutes uh, and get them a result that uh, usually looks better, uh, is more effective, and has the data that they want in a significantly faster time. Yeah, it's interesting that the, the, the data analysts don't necessarily have all the answers without a spatial person, right, to help them organize and think about how things are located in the world, right? Yeah, I mean, we, you, you, can, you can look at a spreadsheet all day long, and it can tell you which stores are performing the best, but it doesn't give you the trends that why is this store that's performing really well next to a store that's not performing well? What's going on there? And you can see some of those trends when you look at a map that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. So you, you were working full-time during your degree program, and, and how, did, how was it to... to participate in our program and also balance with your family life and so on. Tell sure. My original requirement in getting a master's degree is that, again, I was a traveling training consultant. And so I would leave on a Monday and get back on a Friday every single week flying, uh, sometimes from, uh, I was living in Portland at the time, flying from Portland to Miami. I did that for seven months before I, um, for about a year, actually, before I started the program. And so those type of traveling commitments meant that I could not have a typical degree location where I was actually in a classroom every week, uh, even a Saturday based program. I looked at a few in Portland area, Saturday based programs meant that the two days that I had with my family, one of those days was going to be taken. And so I needed something that I could do with me, uh, do on the road and take with me wherever I was, regardless of time. And so that limited the options from a lot of universities down to some that were remote, uh, remote focused. However, I'm also a very, social person. I like to get to know my classmates. I like to be able to have that opportunity to uh, know them on a personal level. And so the one week uh, opportunity to get together on Catalina Island and get to know some of my professors and get to know some of the fellow students that were going through the program was a, a huge win for me. Uh, I really liked that opportunity that it wasn't just all remote. And when I turn off my computer, I never talk to my classmates ever again, that it was an opportunity to really build relationships. Great. Thank you for explaining that. So the, I want to just ask you one, one final question we have here on the slide. Um, you know, a poster that you did at the LA Geospatial Summit that we sponsor at the Spatial Sciences Institute. And um, uh, it relates to your thesis project, right, from your MS GIST. And I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about, you know, tell us a little, just a little bit about your thesis project. And I think that was a passion project for you, too, because I think you're still teaching a little bit in this area. And then and how that set you up how your thesis project set you up for, you know, your career. And yeah, the real, the real common thread between both the, the poster and for in my thesis was uh, I took the track that was focusing on geospatial programming. And so whether that be uh, computer-based programming or web-based programming, or even just data modeling and using uh, Model Builder and other uh, Python tools within Esri's uh, ecosystem to build uh, systems. The, my thesis was around uh, mobile applications for training and education. And the, the poster, I used uh, custom Python tools to build uh, actual physical models with a laser cutter that I have at my house. And so I was able to use the programming skills uh, to build the thesis application and test out what could be, what could be taught uh, in a mobile application where you would actually learn how to uh, do GIS work on your phone and what couldn't be taught. And that was the focus of my thesis uh, and what the limitations were for that type of an application. And then for the poster, uh, was that was actually a capstone project for one of my programming classes where it was, how do I take uh, digital elevation data and turn it into a physical 3D wood model and using 
programming to do all of the work for me so that it's not a 10 step process every time I want to create one, I can click a button and select an area and say, give me my model files. And then I take that over to the laser cutter and cut them out and, and glue it together and have a model. And so the, the two have come together. And I, I love looking at this. Uh, and you see in the all the blue and yellow and green boxes in the middle of that poster image is a model. And uh, I remember at the time that felt like a very complex and very uh, challenging model to create. Uh, and I look back and kind of laugh because the models that I use on a day-to-day -day basis at work now that I build for uh, my tasks uh, are way more complicated than that uh, and save a ton of time. Just this week, uh, I built a model for a project that somebody wanted. Uh, they basically get data on Monday and they have two hour turnaround before they need the results from that analysis that I'm supposed to be doing based off of the geographic areas. And uh, the, initial, the initial task took me about two to three hours. So I'm like, okay, well, that's not going to work. And so uh, I spent about three hours on Monday building a model and got that two hour turnaround time into 15 minutes. And the actual processing time using the model is a minute and 15 seconds. And so I definitely, the, by far and above the best skills that I got from my thesis and from all those projects was being able to streamline and make my work more efficient in my day-to-day -day job by using the programming skills that I got. Thank you so much, Brandon. Yeah, Paris. And thank you for kind of um, explaining to me better how this, how these projects <laughs> actually fit together. Fantastic. So um, I think in the interest of time, I'd like to talk a little bit now about the MSHSGI program. So equal time, right? So. Um, MS in human security and geospatial intelligence. Um, really, our, our goal at this program is uh, thinking about leadership skills and management roles for folks within geospatial intelligence and human security. And so um, we're thinking about, you know, maybe some, some military and intelligence um, kinds of leadership roles in geospatial intelligence. We're also thinking about, um, you know, first responders and issues of human security. Um, and uh, and so on. So um, uh, it's uh, uh, has somewhat more units in it than the MS just degree. Um, uh, a couple more classes in it, uh, particularly to focus on because the class to focus on geospatial leadership. Um, uh, there's an extra remote sensing class and so on. Um, but it's um, uh, the capstone is a little different. The capstone is and if we could go on to the next slide here. The capstone is. Um, uh, a collaborative project, which is done together with a class. So you're working as a team and we typically work with industry partners or government partners. You can kind of see the list here of, of, of the partners that are involved in that. And so each semester we run the capstone, there's one project that's an output for that semester. Um, and you can see we have, you know, pretty robust scientific outcomes. So, so one of the first um, collaborative projects was published here in the Journal of Geographic Information System Systems in 2020. Um, you can see the, the little the title and the excerpt there from the publication. It was actually um, a, a, a look at how to use point clouds to develop terrain models for emergency response and rapid emergency response and how to, how to best handle that information so that uh, first responders can use mosaics to sort of rapidly access the kind of detailed 3D um, imagery and 3D modeling that they would need. And so one of the study areas was the Rose Bowl, which you can see here in the picture below. For those who are from Los Angeles, uh, I should say that uh, it's kind of ironic that we use the Rose Bowl since that's where UCLA plays football. And uh, we have done some more work on the Coliseum more recently where we play our football games. So. Um, so, and now it gives me a great pleasure to introduce uh, Jillian. Uh, so uh, uh, Jillian has an interesting story that I'm going to let her uh, tell you a little bit about, um, that it was sort of a big career shift and transition for her as she came into the MSHSGI program. And so um, can you tell us, Jillian, how, how it came about that USC's uh, HSGI was the right program for you at that time? Yes. Yeah, so I uh, graduated from the United States Air Force Academy in 2018 and was about a year removed from that when some medical things came up and it was looking like I was going to need to transition from the role that I was supposed to be playing in the military to either a civilian role or a different uh, role in the military. And the, I was looking into different grad school programs that were remote and would allow me that flexibility while working full time in the military 
while also pursuing things that I had studied in undergrad that were interesting to me. Um, the HSGI program and the GIST program were kind of the two that I was looking between. And um, the HSGI program fit my interests as well as like my, my needs better because I only had a year of time to complete this degree. And the GIST program was not, I was not able to, would not have been able to complete in one year. So my interests and the time needed uh, to complete a degree that HSGI fit my needs beautifully. And so um, you, you, you chose to take it on very quickly. And I think that's, you know, we should, we should note that that's, it was a, a choice on your part, right? To help aid you in making this, this quick uh, transition. Um, and so what was your experience like with that? How much time did it take you to do your classes? You were taking, how many classes are you taking at a time? Tell us a little bit about kind of how you, how you handled all that. So I took three classes for every semester for three semesters, uh, with the last semester having two classes in addition to the capstone class. Uh, I was working full time uh, at the time in the military. And I will say I would not recommend that anyone take three classes, especially if they're working full time. Um, it did help my time management skills and allowed me to kind of prioritize uh, extracurricular activities that I was doing as well as um, when I completed the classwork. Most of the classes, the assignments were due on different days, which was very helpful for me. And as well as communicating with the teachers that you know, I had a lot on my plate and they were very understanding if something crazy came up at work that I needed you know, an extra day or so on an assignment. So overall, it's very possible, but I do not recommend it. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite a time time management crunch, but you pulled it off. And I think, you know, one thing to say about our program, right, is that we have um, our courses are offered three times a year. And so it is possible if you hit it like Jillian did just at the right timing, right, to to move very quickly um, through our through our degrees. And so um, that lets you get out onto the job market sooner and kind of leverage that, um, you know, leverage those um, those advantages. Um, so. Um, Tell us a little bit about why you chose, well, you were told us kind of why you chose the HSGI program, um, which has capstone rather than a thesis, but <clears throat> what was your experience like in the, in the capstone course and how did, that, how did that work? I really enjoyed the capstone course. Uh, another reason why I chose a capstone as opposed to the thesis of the GIST program was I was interested in working on a team, uh, getting some real hands-on experience problem solving um, and I was lucky enough to know the people who were on my capstone team from my time in Catalina and in other classes, we kept in touch and uh, two of us ended up in the capstone course together. It was also um, a very unique capstone. We didn't work with any of those partners. We helped uh, our teacher, Dr. Fleming, build a course from the ground up and uh, my military background gave a lot of benefit to that. So it was very interesting to me personally and professionally uh, working on the capstone course. Fantastic. Thanks, Julian. So you're about to start a new position in just a couple of weeks, right, with Palace Acquire in Colorado Springs. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what role your MS HSGI education played in, in maybe in winning that position and, and how you think it'll play out in, in the work you do there? Yes. So this position had several hundred applicants uh, and my resume was one of six that made it to the top of the list. And I was one of two people selected for this uh, job as an intelligence specialist. And I will say that uh, my military background played a role, but the, the master's in human security and geospatial intelligence was the biggest factor. And I was told that directly from the hiring manager uh, because they want people who know how to think the way that they want us to think without them having to expend extra effort. The role, uh, the courses that I took in geospatial leadership, as well as the geospatial intelligence uh, classes, definitely built up my uh, tool belt for exactly the things that this job was looking for. And so it allowed me to, you know, really stand out in the hiring pool for this position. Great. Thank you, Jillian. Um, so I think. Let's go on now and, and we'll have just a brief discussion of, 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 you know, kind of some of the differences in the programs. And so I wanted each of you to tell us a little bit about what you consider to be the most important technical skills you gained in the program. And maybe I'll, I'll ask Brandon to start actually. 
Sure. Yeah. So I've already kind of mentioned the programming technical skills. Um, I think one of the things that was really helpful was in that programming space from that technical thing. So I, I had dabbled in programming before uh, and the, the programming track isn't designed to make you an expert in programming, but it, I really felt like it pushed me to the next level uh, from being just a novice to some level of intermediate. Uh, there were several moments where I had those, uh, those aha moments, which, uh, coming from the training space and being a tra technical trainer myself, those are the most wonderful moments to ever have as a teacher. And they're a lot of fun as a student too, when all of a sudden it clicks and I understood why the software was doing what I wanted to, to do or didn't want it to do when I was writing the programs and doing the programming and being able to go through and troubleshoot quickly and adeptly uh, was something that I gained from that class uh, and has really helped me significantly in my career. Thanks, Brandon. And Jillian, what was your what was the most important technical skills you gained in the HSGI program? I would say the critical thinking skills, as well as being able to craft a um, a paper form of those thinking skills. Uh, I also really enjoyed the remote sensing class that I took. I had a little bit of a background in remote sensing previous to this uh, program, but I learned a couple new. Uh, remote sensing programs that were very interesting to me and kind of push those skills to the next level as well. Thanks. Yeah, I think that that remote sensing piece is pretty key in, in the geospatial intelligence world. Thank you. Yeah. Thank can, you. can I add one, sure. one more quick thing? Of course. Just sorry to uh, the, the data acquisition class that we did on Catalina Island, the mm -hmm. whole semester talking about data quality and finding good data and using good data and making sure your data was accurate and all of those pieces are things that I use every single day on my job now as a data analyst and working through that. So, you know, I love the programming. I've always enjoyed that, but something that has really been crucial in my job is definitely been that class. Yeah, you can't, can't get anywhere without good data, right? <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brandon.